Hello everybody, I am Keaton and this is Kid Catholic Season 10 Episode 6. I hope that y'all are having an absolutely fantastic day so far. And Holy Week is coming up this next week. Um, and then Palm Sunday is coming up this Sunday. Um, and so I, I, I was gonna make that one video, but like there's so many separate things to talk about with Palm Sunday. And then you have Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna focus this episode on Palm Sunday specifically, but not just the liturgy itself, more into what we are celebrating on Palm Sunday. Because we know that Palm Sunday, uh, celebrates the day uh, commemorates, I should say, the day in which Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The people laid palms before him, right? We read about that in scripture. What I used to think that this was sort of something that, like, why why are people commemorating this, right? Like, G Jesus rode into a town. Cool, right? Like, that that's really all that, that was going through my head. I, I didn't understand what more there was to it than that. And, and, Honestly, there's so much more deeper levels because we have to think about it. Jesus, when entering Jerusalem, he was fully human and he was fully divine, right? So the human side of him was scared because the divine side of him knew what was about to happen, right? He knew that he was about to be crucified and died. He knew that he was about to be tortured, that he was about to suffer. And he knew that he was entering the town in which that would take place. And when you think about it like that, it just adds so many levels to this to this thought of Jesus entering Jerusalem, right? Because think about it. Put yourself in that situation for a second. You know what's about to happen. You know that you're about to die, that you're about to suffer excruciating pain, right? And you're entering into this place where you're about to. Would you be able to do it? Would you be able to just ride on a donkey peacefully into this without absolutely breaking down? Because I know that I wouldn't, right? I'd be terrified. I think a lot of us would be. Jesus, it's important to note, yes, Jesus was fully divine. But he was 100% human. He wasn't 50% human. He wasn't a little bit human where he got scared sometimes. He was 100% human, right? So how did he manage to not be absolutely petrified? How did he manage to go into Jerusalem knowing what he was about to do and not be extremely fearful? Well, there's this sort of misconception that all of us are just fearful and that the only one who who, who are fearless is just Jesus and all the saints who we can never think of being like, when in reality, you and I can be fearless too. You and I can put ourselves in that situation and be willing to enter Jerusalem. While that probably won't happen literally in today's world, right? We do need to be ready and willing to stand up for our faith. We do need to be ready and willing to figuratively, in a way, enter into Jerusalem and be willing to suffer, be willing to be persecuted, whether that be physically or verbally, for our faith, right? Um, and, and how do we get to that point? How do we get to that point where we are fearless? Well, I want to look in scripture um, for this. And there are two uh, specific Bible verses that I picked out that are just absolutely perfect for this. And they're literally one page um, next to each other. So in Psalms 23, 4, we read, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The very next page, like I said over here, in Psalm 27, 1, we read, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The thing is, we won't be able to get to the point where we're just fearless and we're absolutely willing to do all of that if we don't come to God about it, right? God is how we get rid of that fear, right? God is how we are able to be fearless, because the thing is, it's not this world that's what's most important, right? It's the next. It's eternal life. It's heaven that's most important. And we should be able to walk through the valley of death fearless. That doesn't mean that it's just easy. Because it's not. I mean, that is a scary thing. The way Psalms right there words it. It, 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 it makes it sound so terrifying, right? The valley of death. We want to walk through the valley of death and still fear no evil. That, that seems impossible. And if it, we were to try it with just ourselves, without the help of God, without the help of anybody else, if we were to try to walk through the valley of death with just ourselves, it would be impossible to to fear no evil in that situation. It would be absolutely impossible. It would be excruciatingly fearful, right? The thing is, if we have a God with us in that, 
if we have Jesus with us and that Jesus quite literally walked into his death or rode a donkey rather entered into his death the sooner that we are able to come to God about these things the closer that we may get with Jesus the easier that this will seem again it, it seems scary and sometimes it is okay to be afraid but we have to be willing to put our faith in Jesus Christ. We read right there in Psalms, right? Jesus is our light and our salvation. We have absolutely nothing to fear because the thing is, we can think of the worst evil in the world. Jesus can conquer that by a million, right? We can think of the absolute worst evil. We can think of demons. We can think of Satan, all of that, right? And that can be scary. But the thing is, Jesus can conquer all of that with ease, right? God has the ability to immediately conquer that because God outweighs any form of evil. If you were to take the greatest evil in the world, multiply that by a million, it still would not come close to defeating God, right? God can absolutely conquer evil in every single circumstance. So why would we try to go through a fearful situation, whether it's literally physically fearful, right? Or whether it's more metaphorically fearful, if we're uh, afraid to sort of stand up for our Catholic faith, right? If it's verbally fearful, whatever it may be, why would we want to go through that without God? Because there are a lot of scary things in life, right? Whether it be evils, whether it be physical harm, whether it be things that aren't even Catholic, but, but maybe just kind of scary, Right? Why would we want to go through any of that without the one thing that can conquer all of that? That is God. I mean, just like with anything, things get easier when we come to God, right? Things are still going to be scary. But if we have someone right there with us who is willing, who is able to conquer all of that, then we will be willing to enter into Jerusalem in a way, right? To enter into Jerusalem on that donkey. And I think that that's something that all of us can think about for this upcoming Palm Sunday. Because Palm Sunday, that commemorates a lot more than just Jesus walks into a town, right? Jesus is walking into, in a way, his death, right? He knows what's about to happen to him. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, that's all coming up, right? He knows what is about to happen. And yet he still goes. Even the fully human side of him still goes. Why? Because he has God. Each and every one of us need to take that, need to take what Jesus did, what these saints have done, right? And we need to mimic that. And anytime we feel like we're just struggling to walk through the valley of death, right? We're struggling to enter into Jerusalem in whatever way it may be, right? Whether we're literally afraid, whether we're metaphorically afraid, we can look to Jesus for help. Because Jesus' fully human side was able to do it. Even though his fully divine side knew what would happen. And I think that that is something that we all need to think about heading into this Palm Sunday, heading into this Holy Week, heading into the, the end of Lent, right? So now that the topic is done, do y'all know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is Saint Jose Sanchez Del Rio. Now, Saint Jose Sanchez Del Rio, Del Rio has like such an impactful story. It's such a like emotional story. Like even just hearing it can give you chills. Saint Jose Sanchez Del Rio was born in 1913 and from a very young age at the time of his hometown in Mexico, uh, there was a war going on in Mexico. The Mexican government wanted to get rid of any influence the Catholic Church had in the country. So they started like mass executing priests. They executed the clergy. Um, they tried to get rid of any Christians that there were. And a lot of Catholics actually stood up, right? They, they joined what was known as the rebellion, right? They joined the rebellion. St. Jose uh, Sanchez del Rio's brother was a part of this rebellion, and Jose wanted to join, uh, but his parents wouldn't let him, and the general wouldn't let him. But after persistent uh, arguing, Jose was finally allowed to join the rebellion uh, and be the flag bearer for that troop. And in fact, by the fellow soldiers, he was nicknamed Tarsicius um, after the early uh, Christian martyr who was a very young boy at the time, like St. Jose was. So St. Jose, uh, in the middle of a battle, uh, the general's horse just got ab was lost, right? Got killed. Um, and so St. Jose gave up his own horse to the general, and this led Jose to have to flee, to run, to try to hide. Eventually, uh, he was captured by the government. The government told him to denounce his faith, told him, you know, we'll spare your life if you denounce your faith. 
but Saint Jose Sanchez Del Rio did not give in. Uh, he he continued to say no that he would not denounce his faith. And eventually, after the Mexican government realized that there was nothing that they could do that would change this boy's mind, they cut open the bottom of his feet and made him walk um, across town to the cemetery. Uh, and that can sound like really graphic and, and horrible and scary. But what's really beautiful about this is that Saint Jose Sanchez Del Rio, while this was happening, he was saying the rosary and praying for his enemies. The soldiers told him that his life would be spared if he shouted, Death to Christ the King. Instead, he shouted, Viva Cristo Rey, which means long live Christ the King, which is just absolutely beautiful. He was later martyred for his faith and canonized in 2016 by Pope Francis. He is a truly remarkable, amazing saint. Like, I don't even know how to begin to, to like, wrap my mind about that story. That is just absolutely beautiful, absolutely crazy that he was able to endure that. The reason I chose him for today's topic is quite obvious. He is someone who from a very young age was absolutely fearless, right? Imagine being able to go through that. He was so, so fearless, much like the rest of the martyrs, right? St. Jose Sanchez Del Rio has a beautiful story. And anytime we feel like we ourselves are fearful, we ourselves are struggling to come to Jesus Christ about our fears so that we may be fearless, we can look to St. Jose Sanchez Del Rio for ho help. St. Jose Sanchez Del Rio, pray for us. So, thank you all so much for watching this episode. Um, before you click off this video, uh, please go to my website, keepcatholic.com. There's so many things you can do on there, including hit the contact me page, and you can contact me about giving uh, a talk. I am doing speaking engagements in person again since the COVID shutdowns. Um, I'm happy to do them at online as well, but I am doing them in person again. Uh, so if you want me to come and speak to your uh, youth group, church, men's group, women's group, uh, RCIA, school, whatever, Whatever it may be, uh, please email me directly at kidcatholic1 at gmail.com or go to my website kidcatholic.com and hit the contact me page. Uh, please like the video. Please check out all three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram down below. And please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful day. Uh, ha have a great rest of your day as well. I'll see you all next week. And hi, Brielle. <laughs>